viewers of the YouTube. I am the Faceless Rebel, and this is my first ever moto vlog. I hope you can hear me all right with that wind. <clears throat> I'm new to it, moto vlogging. I'm also new to riding. I'm gonna try my best to give you a little story as to how I came to be a motorcyclist and how I came to be a moto vlogger. So, basically, about seven years ago, maybe a little bit longer, I moved to the countryside from London. I've always been a bit of a city boy, and I moved to the countryside. I followed a woman. I'm glad I did because she is the apple of my eye, she really is. But that's a, that's a time for a different story. Um, now we're talking about motorbikes and motor vlogging. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and keep on subject. I am a bit of a rambler though, so. Not a rambler who walks up mountains with sticks, even though I don't mind that, I have done that a few times. I'm talking more rambling, chatting shit. That is what we do. So. A while ago, I moved into the countryside, like I said, and I met a gentleman named Ryan. Uh, top bloke, really nice fella. He taught me how to ride a motocross bike. Um, I was basically, it was a little Chinese 80cc motorbike, um, and he showed me how to ride it. Within 10 minutes, I was doing bloody all right. I was doing not so bad at all. and. Uh, took to it quite naturally and I thought to myself I should have really been doing this sooner but I don't know why I mean I think it was just because life took its took its toll I mean I I got kids and I had to get a driving license when I was in London uh, it was more practical to have a car um, and I just was never really into bikes as a youngster um, I mean I liked them but I never knew what they were like they'd drive past me and I wouldn't have a bloody clue what they were um, but that's all changed now. I'm well into my bikes now. <laughs> I love them. Um, so yeah, he got me into it, old Ryan. And uh, basically introduced me to motorcycling. And I, I thank him for it. Um, all right, where to move on from here? So basically, I got a deep love and passion for motorcycling from that day, from riding in the woods. Um, and I couldn't forget about it. Even though it took me a good few years to pass, to actually do my license, to get the money together, uh, it really didn't exit my head. It was always there. That's what I wanted to do, was ride a motorbike. Um, so, you know, lo and behold, here I am. Um, there's a lot more to the story and I'll try and cover some of it. I'll try and cover what I can remember to fit into this video. So my father-in-law, <clears throat> I call him Opa. And Opa is Afrikaans for granddad. Um, I call him that because he is obviously the grandfather to my children. And I call him that out of respect. I love him. And he is a great man and I won't have a bad word said about him, so don't even try it. So he, let me have a go on his 250 Kawasaki Enduro bike. Now that was lovely, that was a real good, I lived in a very quiet place, very, very quiet place, no one on the road, and I took it for a little ride. And I fell in love with it straight away. I forgot what gear I was in there for a second, excuse me. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, yeah, fell in love with it, went for a ride, and it was amazing, it was as if, motorcycling grabbed me by the bollocks and would not let go after Opal got rid of that bike he got a Kawasaki VN 900 custom chopper which he also let me have a go on this is how cool this man is yeah what he done was he passed me the key he threw the key at me yeah the first day he bought it I'm telling you the first day he bought it, he threw the key at me. He knew I'd ridden like motocross and stuff. He knew I could handle the controls. Just prepared to stop here. Wheelie the bridge, no, only joking. So yeah, he threw the key at me and 
I said, Opa, you do know that the biggest white bike I ever rid was that 250 Kawasaki that you let me have a go on? And he was like, just don't drop it. Now, how cool is that? Come on now, how cool is that? That's the best father-in-law ever. He said, yeah, don't drop it. So what I've done is I got on it, started it. My legs were going all weak because I was like orgasming, orgasming, because <laughs> uh, it was so amazing. And basically what he'd done was, I stalled it. So I stalled it first time, right? And he goes, I can't watch this. And he goes inside to go and have a cup of tea. So he didn't want to watch me stall his bike, which was fair enough, I didn't blame him for that. But he still let me have a go. So I had a little go and I loved it. It was fucking amazing. Uh, and that was when that, that grip that I was talking about, the one that grabbed me around the bollocks and wouldn't let go, it turned into a vice grip. Um, the power in that bike, I mean, it's not crazy power, and it weren't crazy fast, but I didn't go fast either. I just loved the thrill of it, being able to sit on a bike with an engine and ride. It was like I was meant to be a motorcycler, or motorcyclist, however you want to say it. So, yeah, it was, it was my calling, um, and it, I wouldn't stop. So I've done my theory test. Theory is just like, it is what it says. If you don't know the English laws, you basically have to do a theory test and uh, a CBT, which is basically like a little one, two, five on the road. Um, and then after that, you've got to do a module one, which is an off-road test. Not off-road as in through the woods, but an off-road as in slow, slow maneuvers, manual handling, you know, quite slow stuff. Uh, and then the module two is uh, the, basically the big bike test. You've got to do it on a 600 or above. Look at these fucking stones in the road. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, yeah, you've got to do it on a 600 above or you, you won't be able to ride a big boy bike. So, yeah, this is my big boy bike. Um, so I've done that. Uh, where, where did I get to? I was explaining what you got to do. So just, just another one before I stop talking about Opar. Opar is the main reason why I managed to motorcycle. He is, I mean, he's like a second father. My father was also a very amazing man. He died when I was younger. Um, and that's a sad story that I'm not going to tell today because he's nothing really to do with my motorcycling. Even though he used to motorcycle, uh, he was nothing really to do with this. So, yeah, I just want to say, Opa, massive thanks to you. You're the reason why I'm doing this now. I'm fulfilling one of the things on my bucket list and I thank you so much for it. And and Omar as well. Don't forget Omar because without, without her say so, Opa wouldn't have been able to let me. <laughs> Yeah, basically he helped me out with some financials. Um, you know, helped me get the license. And that's why I'm here now. So, Opa, you're a legend, I love you. As you can see, I'm just cruising at the moment. Should be going a bit faster, but I'm too busy chatting. Um, so, yeah, good news. Today, I actually passed my module two. Um, and look at me, I'm riding already. Um, and I good, and I good. Um, so yeah, uh, I passed today, shout out to my, uh, my instructor, um, he's not very customer friendly, but I'll tell you what, he got the job done and he's sound as a pound, um, you know, he is sound, can't say a bad word about him. He thinks I'm terrible at taking directions, which I probably am actually, <laughs> I'm used to being in a car with a sat nav, so directions is not really my strong point, but that's <laughs> also another story. Now, just a quick thing as to what to expect on my channel. Um, to be honest, in life, I've been known to be a bit of a harsh, hard bastard. And I can't help that, it was the way I was dragged up. <laughs> Love you, mum and dad, I do deeply. Um, but they, they brought me up the old school way, you know? Um, the amount of wooden spoons I had broken over me as a kid. Now, some of you might not agree, but I'll tell you what, I love my mum and dad because they brought us up the old school way. They brought us up, in my opinion, the proper way. Um, I, don't get me wrong, I'd never la lay a hand on my kids and I've never had to. Uh, I've never had to, normally my voice is enough. Um, but I was brought up the old school way. I was brought up with three brothers. I've obviously got older sisters and brothers. Um, but mainly it was just me three brothers, literally all of us together. So there was me, the older one, 
the middle one, G-Man <laughs> and Mickey, the little one. And now it's funny because the little one always turns out to be the biggest one. He's the biggest one out of the lot, <laughs> which is quite funny. Um, I actually don't know where I'm going with this right now. I think I've told the basic story. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you about this bike. So I'm riding uh, a, Su a Suzuki Bandit 600S. Obviously the S is because it is fared. What's this fucking tractor doing? Don't tell me I'm gonna be stuck behind this fucking thing now. Oh well, oh well. Farmers have got to do their job too, I suppose. So, yeah, it's a Suzuki Bandit 600S with the fairing on it. Um, otherwise it would be an N, which would stand for naked. I like it naked, but I'll tell you what, this fairing is actually pretty good for keeping the wind off. It's quite nice. Um, and I got this from my cousin. My cousin, my little, my little cousin, he races motorsport league, uh, thunder sport, sorry. Um, he's got a little R6 and he's been riding forever. Shit, since he was able to, he's been riding. And my uncle uh, has also been riding, his father. He's also ridden his whole life and he still does now. Um, so I intend to, I actually look forward to uh, going to France and that with him. These roads are a bit bendy to be going around that tractor. There's a straight round here though, so I'll get round it. Um, yeah, big shout out to you, cuz. Uh, you're a legend. Got this bike off him. He wanted some money for his for his racing, some funds, and yeah, I wanted a bike. So, and this Bandit, Bandit 600, I've done a bit of research before I got my first bike. You know, this is actually my first bike. I've never had a 125 or anything like that. him yeah it's my first bike uh, and I've done a bit of studies and I basically heard that it's a pretty decent bike for a first one um, Robert first big boy bike gets you used to the power I know it's not crazy power but it's it's good enough uh, it's good enough to have a bit of fun on overtake stuff but not enough to fucking pop you into a, a lab post to kill you um, it's controllable uh, and it's good to get used to I really love it. I think it's a great little bike. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned, but I passed my bloody test today. Yeah! See, I'm so forgetful. If I have mentioned that already, I do apologise. <laughs> I passed my big boy licence today. I'm so fucking happy. It's unbelievable. I really am. I'm just chuffed to bits uh, that I can actually now ride legally on the road. Uh, I can put Betty, good old Betty, put her to use. Um, Good, good little bit of kit. Good little bit of kit. I do do enjoy it. Who was I? Yeah. So, fuck it. I lost. I lost my train of thought. Ah, Oh well. Oh well. It's not going to be the first time I forget what I'm saying. It ain't going to be the last. Let me tell you that. So, what to expect on the channel? I'm going to be ranting. Uh, I'm definitely going to have some rants. I've got a lot of stuff to say. Oh yeah. What I'm saying. People think I'm a harsh bastard. And I, I can be sometimes. Um, it's like I ain't got a heart sometimes. I really do have a heart. Um, it beats, you know, it pumps blood around my body. But emotions is not really my best thing. Uh, I'm not really that good with emotion. Uh, yeah, I don't, don't really like emotion that much. It's not that good. But I can deal with it when I need to. Um, I can show it when I need to. It weren't so long ago, I had a little cry actually. <laughs> I had a cry. But it was probably about not being able to ride my bike <laughs> so yeah I mean I didn't even cry at my wedding uh, when I married my beautiful beautiful wife I love you so much baby um, yeah I didn't even cry then and she was like you better cry on our wedding day she didn't sound like that I'll just put that on because that's what all men do if they're married you'll know what I'm talking about I forget what I was saying again, but that's probably what I'm going to do quite a lot. Remind me in the comments <laughs> and I'll be able to tell you what I was saying. So I don't, oh shit, I left the indicator on. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I don't know, um, do, 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 do. I don't know, I just don't know. I don't know anymore. 
I'm losing my mind. I fucking don't know, do I? Nah. Ah, I know what I was talking about. Mo I was going to talk about moto vloggers, just quickly. Moto vloggers. Now, the reason why I'm doing it myself is because I watch it and I'm a fan of it and I'm quite late to it. Um, I just love it. I mean, there's some really good moto vloggers out there. Uh, and that just reminded me because I was talking about London. I love RJ, he's, he's awesome. I'm not going to name drop anymore actually. Everyone knows who RJ is, I don't need to say anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, don't get me wrong, if I could ride like him, and I'm sure one day I will be half as good as him, <laughs> about like splitting traffic and that, I definitely be, will be heading down to London. Maybe not central, because that's not where I'm from. But I'll go do, down to the Ealing Borough, you know what I mean? See, see my boys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 brother, all right, all right. <laughs> I sound like a fucking nutter. I'm talking to myself, a crazy person. But I like it, I like it. I like a lot. I've got to be faceless and nameless and all that malarkey. Um, who knows? Maybe one day I might reveal the face and be face rebel. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I don't mind. Um, I'm not an oil painting, that's for sure. Uh, I definitely don't look beautiful or pretty. I definitely don't have a noodle haircut on my head and I definitely don't wear skinny jeans. But that's personal preference. I, I know a time when men were men. That time is not today, I must say. But I like to still be a man. Um, you know, go home, put my feet up while the wife cook. Now I'm only joking, I like cooking as well. Um, and I do do the dishes. No matter how much she says I don't, I definitely do. I definitely do do the dishes, I'm sure I do. I think I do. What the fuck are you doing? See, there's my first bit of road rage. Geez, are cutting over into my lane. It didn't even look like he was watching the road, man. Fucking, sorry about the swearing out loud, guys. Um, but you're probably going to get a lot of that because there are a lot of fucking idiots on the road today. I'm going. It's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure bringing you this video. Um, really has been. And I hope to bring you many more. This is, you know, I'm actually doing what I really want to do, which is bring motor vlogs and ride a motorbike and talk to myself like a crazy person and, you know, show support to the biking community. Um, you know, definitely show support to the biking community. That's what's important as well because the car community is not like that. Everyone just wants to get home fucking as quick as they can. They don't give a shit about anyone else on the road. They just want to get home put their feet up and I don't blame them but there's no community like there is on the bikers I mean it is amazing because bikers look out for each other you know what I mean yeah nice little bit of a hill here nice yeah bikers look out for each other most of them not all of them but most of them do and it's good it's so nice to uh see that, that, that bikers do that and um, you know that's what another thing that draw me into it is because you know I'd say nine out of ten bikers that you ride past they give you a nod I always give a nod back I just gave him that car a nod but that wasn't for the car that was just me explaining the bikers nod to bikers and I appreciate it I mean you get the odd few that won't give the nod back and that's fair enough maybe they're concentrating on the road you know what I mean that's that's their that's their thing you know I don't mind that's all good and yeah I think I'm gonna bring it to an end now um, and I just hope you keep watching and because I'm gonna keep bringing the videos so you know if no one watches I, deep down I don't really care because <laughs> it's for me and it keeps me sane um, which is fine which is fine by me I like being sane um, but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed the first moto vlog I hope I covered everything I wanted to cover. I know when I watch it back. Um, yeah, so, not probably the best place to be talking really, at a junction. Hey ho. Oh, wrong gear.